Our World is a massive game with so many things to learn and experience, and as with any open world survival game, there's a lot that it doesn't actually tell you. So today we're going to go over all of my favorite tips that I have learned, not only from my experience throughout the game, but many tips that y'all have provided me during live streams that are really going to help improve your experience in Pal World. Now the first thing we're going to go over are Pal stats, and I think there's some specific things that a lot of people overlook, and the game does not explain to you at all. Now we have two level 45 Fox Sparks here with drastically different attack power. Now there's two reasons for this. One of which is this Fox Sparks here has a passive skill on it called Muscle Head, and this one has no passive skills. So obviously passive skills are incredibly important. We'll get into that in just a second. But the other thing that is incredibly important is if we look at these two level four Fox Sparks here, one has the passive skill Slacker. All that does is reduce the work speed. So you will notice a difference in work speed on these two pals, but that's not particularly important for this. All pals will Will have a base work speed for that particular pal no matter what but the difference will be within the attack and defense you notice this level four fox sparks has an attack of 123 and 72 defense whereas the other one has a 126 attack with 75 defense so any pal is able to allocate essentially points into attack and defense while they're in the wild before you catch them so if you're going to be min maxing for attack or defense or something in between you're gonna wanna pay attention to their base attack and defense before you start upgrading them. Now you can do this by actually going into it. So if we hover over one of our pals, we can hit the view details button and you can hover over the attack here and the defense. Now, if there's any bonuses, it'll show a base attack and an increase. So if we go back to this Fox Sparks here, we're gonna view details. We can see that our base attack is 504, but since we have the passive skill of plus 30% attack, it goes from 504 to 655 attack. And we have a base defense of 390. Now the base attack here is 504 on this level 45 Fox Bark. And if we look at our other level 45 and check out its base attack, it's 492. Now that is a difference of 12 attack. And while that might not sound like a lot, it's actually pretty significant. So my tip is to make sure to pay attention to what stats are allocated to the pals that you are catching in the wild before investing into breeding them or enhancing them because that stuff will play a role as you enhance and further enhance those pals. You can see that in effect on my Lift Monk here, which is level 45 with 961 attack. I actually bred a Lift Monk with well over 1,000 attack, and that thing is an absolute monster. Now, the main reason for this is we do have Ferocious on here, which is a plus 20% attack increase. We have Lucky, which is work speed plus 15 and attack plus 15. And we also have a muscle head with attack plus 30% and work speed minus 50%. So this isn't a worker. We don't care too much about the negative work speed. Now, the last thing about PAL stats is you may have noticed that my Lift Monk and Fox Barks both have increased work suitability. We have Kindling level two on this Fox Bark and we have all level two skills on our Lift Monk. Now, normally Fox Barks and Lift Monks have level one skills. You can see the level one Kindling here on this. And the way you increase these stats is through the PAL condensation menu. You can pick up the PAL condenser in your technology tree. So if you really want to min-max your workers as well, you're going to want to catch a lot of them to be able to upgrade them in the condenser. You'll have to use a lot of them. And I believe you have to get them to either level three or level four to be able to actually up their work suitability. So it's no small task, but if you really want to min-max things at your base, this is how you're going to do it. Now let's go over PAL capture rates. There's actually a couple different ways we can go about improving this. And if we look at this chickpea right here, when we're pointing at its face, we're going to see a 30% capture rate. But if we look at its back, we get a bonus because of the back bonus, increasing it to 51%. So when you're capturing PALs, if you really want to save as many PAL spheres as possible, you're going to want to make sure to hit them in the back. Now there is also a chance that when you hit a PAL in the face, it has a chance of actually deflecting that PAL sphere. So you're going to want to avoid hitting PAL directly in the face when you're trying to capture them as much as possible. Now, obviously, the other way to increase the capture rate is to deal damage to them, and the lower health they get, the higher chance you have of capturing. Like, if we look at this now, no matter where we aim, it's going to be a 100%. The other thing you're definitely going to want to do is go to the Statue of Power. You're going to enhance player stats, and you're going to use these Lift Monk effigies to enhance our capture power. This can be a pretty substantial power capture increase, 
And when you get to a late game, this is going to be a game changer on if you're going to be able to catch some of the higher level pals in the game. If you want to get some of the best abilities in the game early for your pals, you don't want to skip out on these skill fruit trees. Now all of these trees can respawn their skill fruits. I just got a Draconic Breath here with 70 power and a CT of 15. Now the CT stands for cooldown time and it is in seconds. So this means it's going to take 15 seconds for this to refresh on a pal and you can get epic abilities from trees anywhere in the game. Now skill fruit trees have about a three to four hour respawn timer on them and you can get some really great skills. Like I just got two lightning bolts, which has a power of 150 and flare storm, which is actually really good has an attack power of 80 with a cooldown timer of 18 seconds. Now there are many skill fruit trees strewn throughout the world. Here's a view of all of these skill fruit trees that I have. The stars are skill fruit tree locations. I do have a video that goes more in depth into all of these. I'll leave a link in the description. Essentially the way this works is trees in lower level zones are going to drop uncommon and rare skill fruits more often than not with a low chance of dropping epic fruits. The higher level mobs in the zone, the higher chance you have of that zone having epic fruits in them. So if you're looking for epic fruits and rare fruits specifically, then you're going to want to go down to areas that have high level mobs like this spot right here. There's another one up on the north end of this island. You're going to want to make your way to the desert. There's a couple locations here. There's one over here and there's one more at the north end of the ice area. Now aside from getting an increased chance of getting epic fruits you can't specifically target elements like you can't go to the desert and get more of the electric types you can't go to the ice area to get a higher chance of ice type moves it is all completely random what type of fruit spawns on the trees one of the most annoying things in pal world is having your stuff expire the way fridges work in this game is pretty terrible honestly you'll notice here that the grilled chickpea has 46 minutes to expire right now but this gray bar stays exactly the same now if we remove our jolt hog from this you'll notice that we still have five you'll notice that the second he moves away it's still at five minutes for the expiration timer what needs to happen is the fridges need to refresh the expiration bar so that way the second one of your pals leaves to go eat or sleep or whatever it's going to do you're not going to lose your items now one of the ways to fix this is you can hit the sort button and it will refresh the cooldown timers for you so now our chickpeas have 179 hours before they expire although once jolt hog leaves it's going to go back down to like five minutes or whatever it is. But it's one way to help you keep your stuff from expiring. Anytime you go into your inventory, make sure to sort it so that way you refresh your timers. And anytime you go into any other inventory, I highly recommend using the sort button to refresh the timers too. There seems to be a bit of confusion between which of the early mounts are the fastest. There's the group of people that believe the Dire Howl is faster. If you go into the details menu, you can see it moves slightly faster than most mounts. And that is true. But the deer is exponentially better. You get double jump with this, so you're going to be able to traverse terrain easier. And you have a move called Antler Uppercut that gives you a massive speed boost. Now, if you don't believe me, I'm going to prove it. Now, to showcase the speed difference, we're going to do a little bit of a race. Now, you'll notice initially the Dire Wolf can go a little bit faster, but once you use Antler Uppercut, you can get a massive massive speed boost that the dire wolf just cannot keep up with and you can do this over and over and over and the dire wolf is just never going to be able to catch up so anybody that says the dire howl is the faster mount is 100 wrong and you should probably pick up a deer now don't get me wrong the dire howl is still one of my favorite mounts because it can fit inside of caves so if i'm going caving i'm gonna bring a dire howl if i'm exploring the open world i'm gonna use a deer at least until you can pick up this bad boy the fang lope which is the fastest ground mount in the game. Now for probably one of my favorite tips. Right now, I can't move. I am over encumbered way too much, but there's a nice little trick you can do to still be able to move around. These mega grappling guns or any grappling gun in general are so unbelievably useful in a pinch. You can learn them under the ancient technology tree. The first one you can learn at level 12 and the upgraded version you can learn at level 17. So when you're over encumbered, what you can do is use the mega grappling gun to launch yourself over to a chest. If you get stuck, you just swap the weapon off 
and you'll drop back down and you can just transfer your items in. And now you're free to move as you please. If you ever plan on moving bases, this can come in super handy. Because what you can do is you can pick up all of your stuff, grapple over to your pal box, and then you can fast travel over to one of your new bases, pop over to another storage box, and drop things off. This makes moving bases or things in between bases extremely easy. Now you might be wondering how do you unlock multiple bases? Well, you need to make sure that you're doing your base upgrades at your pal box. At level 10, you'll unlock the ability to have two bases, and at level 15, you'll unlock the ability to have three bases. Three is the max that you can have. The max number of pals you can have working at each base is 15, so you'll be able to use 45 pals across all three bases. This is a setting you can change in the menu, so you can increase the number of pals available to work at bases if you want. Now let's go over best base locations. For your first base, I recommend building up in an area that gives you access to a lot of natural resources. So you're going to want wood, stone, and maybe some metal nodes if they're around. This is going to help you get built up pretty quick, and eventually you'll be able to make the logging site and the stone pit, which is going to eliminate the need for trees and stone. At this point in time, I recommend building a metal base. One of the best locations to build a metal base is going to be just west of the Plateau of Beginnings. There's a fast travel point here called the Small Settlement, and you can go to this location right here. This spot has quite a few little metal nodes here. You can see just how much metal is sitting on the ground right now. I've been having a glitch where all of my pals seem to get broken for the last day, so that's why everything in my bases are depressed or weak or broken or starving. But you can get a ton of metal at this location. You're going to want to make sure to set up your base with food sources, beds, hot springs, and forges, at least for a metal base. And obviously you can add whatever else you want. I've got some breeding pens here. I like to farm up different resources here, like all of this wool, because I'm gonna be making some more high quality beds at all the bases. So I need a lot of wool. Now, as you progress through the game, you're gonna need more and more metal. It becomes absolutely ridiculous the amount of ore that you're going to be needing. So setting yourself up a dedicated metal farming base is going to be unbelievably important. This is also where the grappling hook is going to come in handy. If your pals aren't bringing your stuff to your box, you can use the grappling hook trick to gather it up and put them in the box yourself. Now, as you progress through the game, you're gonna unlock refined ingots. This is going to require two ore and two coal, which means your third base is most likely going to be a coal base if you really don't wanna have problems getting refined ingot. And boy, oh boy, are you gonna need a ton of this stuff. So your next base location for your third base, or at least one of your bases, should be north of this metal farming location. It's west of Mount Floppy Summit, and east of the sealed realm of the Winged Tyrant, in this desert area right here. There is a ton of coal mine, there are a ton of coal nodes here, allowing you to quickly be able to gather as much coal as you're going to allow you to gather as much coal as you're going to ever need. Now the unfortunate part about this is there are a lot of thugs and lavanders here that spawn at night. Regardless, if you put good pals here, you're not going to have much of a problem. There is quite a bit of flat land here for you to build out a proper base. You can put up walls and all sorts of defenses to deal with any of the pals or minions that might be causing you problems. Now maybe you don't want to set up new bases to be able to farm stuff up. Completely understandable. So get yourself a party of thick boys. Not only are they absolutely beautiful, but they have a partner skill called King of Muscles. They can be ridden, and while in team, King Paka helps carry supplies increasing the player's max carrying capacity. Each King Paka that you add to your party is going to increase is going to increase your carrying limit by another each King Paka that you have in your party is going to increase your carrying limit by 100, which you can see by my carry limit currently being 1200, a 500 bonus from 700. Now if you wanted to do a real big brain move, you would put mine foreman on each of your Pakas which increases your mining efficiency by 25% each time. So this could be a drastic increase to your mining efficiency. Plus that I mentioned they're beautiful. Now let's talk about some player speed tricks. Walking is pretty slow, sprinting is a little bit faster, but rolling is way better. Rolling is going to give you an increased speed boost than sprinting. Yeah, it's going to burn stamina every time you roll, but you're going to move a lot farther than you would be if you were just sprinting. Now I can do you one even better than this. While sprinting downhill, you can hit the crouch button to slide, and if you jump during the slide and activate your parachute, you can get a nice speed boost on your parachute. This will definitely help you move a lot faster across the map. Now I get asked a lot what the best way to level in Pal World is. What's the best way to level for a certain level, or should you level all of this? 
Now the trick to leveling is it doesn't matter where you really level. The only thing that really matters in the most efficient way to level up in PAL world is to make sure you get your capture bonuses. Anytime you encounter a new PAL in PAL world, you're gonna wanna capture 10 of those. If you do this every single time, everywhere you go, this is going to be the fastest way to level in the game. Now say you're stuck at a level and you're wanting to get to the next one, go to your PAL deck and make sure to start from the lowest level PALs and make sure you've caught 10 of each of them. If you come across one that you haven't captured, even if you're level 45, like I am, we can go hunt down these quacks for any pal you haven't caught 10 of. And you'll notice when you capture it, you get a nice XP bonus. We got 3,768 XP for capturing one of these sparkets because I don't have 10 of them already. And the nice thing about this is the XP scales to your level. So even though you're catching low level pals, you're going to get the same amount of XP as if you had caught a pal your level. So anytime you're needing XP in pal world, check out your pal decks, go to areas where you haven't caught a lot of pals, and start capturing all of the ones that you haven't gotten 10 of yet. This is by far the fastest way to level in Power World no matter what. Now this leads directly into the next tip. If you're going to be hunting lots of pals and catching them, you're going to need a lot of pal spheres. And I don't have almost 1200 of them because I crafted them. There is an infinite pal sphere trick you can do involving Vixies. If you put a Vixie in your base, they'll automatically go to the ranch and they'll start digging up pal spheres for you. Not only will they dig up pal spheres, they'll also dig up gold coins and arrows. And if you put enough Vixies in your ranch, you'll have hundreds if not thousands of pal spheres in little to no time at all. Probably one of my favorite things in pal world. I only wish you could teach them to dig up higher level spheres. That would be a little too broken though. And the final tip that the game definitely does not tell you is yeah, you can have more than one pal out at once. Now technically, the PAL isn't fully out. There are a couple PALs in PAL world that allow you to have a harness on them that keeps them out and fight alongside of you. Daydream is one of these, and the skill is called Dream Chaser. While they're in your team, as long as you have their saddle or harness, or necklace I think is what it's called, crafted, which is called the Daydream Necklace. If a Daydream is in your team, it'll stay by your side and attack enemies in tandem. Now this partner skill will activate, and if you level them up properly, they can actually do a ton of damage and the best part about this is the daydreams themselves can never be hit now if we attack a creature with the daydreams out what's going to happen is they are going to automatically attack anything that we are attacking now the daydreams cannot take any damage while this is happening so anytime you're attacking they will attack in tandem and if you level them up the right way they can actually do a ton of damage now if you hit the command button you can command them to not attack, so that way they will stop attacking. You can also have them uh, focus on the same enemy. You can do this with the Daydream Necklace, or if you want to have floppies instead, you can do it with the floppy necklace. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.